Good evening and welcome back to Sounding Board. Sounding Board is a production of Seroptimist International of Novato, an organization whose mission it is to improve the lives of girls and women locally and globally. I'm Martina Bedar and I'm very happy to have back as our guest Zara Babitsky of um, Ambassadors of Hope and Opportunity. She is the founding director and also Kevin Ippolito who is the Outreach Youth Advisor and Board Member of Ambassadors of Hope and Opportunity. So welcome. It's great having you back and it's great having you here. Thank you. Thank you, Martina. You're welcome. And I'm just going to tell our audience that we're going to use the um, acronym AHO and that's going to be tonight Ambassadors of Hope and Opportunity. Okay, well, Sarah, for people who haven't been watching the last two programs in mm -hmm. which you joined us, Please tell us a little bit about AHO and how you started it and what its main purpose is. Ambassadors of Hope and Opportunity is now seven years old and our mission is with young adults ages 16 to 25 who have no families or resources and are homeless or at risk here in Marin County and we provide a myriad of comprehensive resources, housing, employment, a caring adult ally and many other uh, supports for the youth along with leadership opportunities. And I know you also provide dentists and doctors and That's therapists, right. professionals in our community who are willing to help on a pro bono basis. That's correct. What an excellent service, an excellent series of services. <laughs> We have 32 community partners that we're very excited and proud to have working with us on behalf of our youth. Wonderful. And I know it might seem that in our beautiful, wonderful, upscale Marin County, homeless youth is not a problem, not an issue, but in fact it is. As you've been telling us, that there is quite an amazing number of youth in that situation right here in Marin. Exactly. Uh, an estimated 2,500. And uh, the numbers are difficult to get exact for a variety of reasons. You live a very nomadic lifestyle. Uh, there is no definitive definition of what homeless youth means. Uh, it could be youth who are couch surfing, moving from one home to another without a stable place. They could be on the street, living in marshes or under bridges. Uh, just a variety of different circumstances. Uh, also, there is no definitive age uh, for this population that's vastly underserved and growing. Uh, some organizations work with youth ages 12 to 19, others 16 to 19, still others 18 to 21. Uh, we work with you 16 to 25, so it's all across the board. So one of our key focuses, in addition to uh, providing preventative services and direct services, is working in Sacramento um, on policy change and with the California Research Bureau. And one of the big policy changes that needs to happen is providing a shelter for homeless youth not to mix them in with adults, but to have a separate shelter. And this is something that is direly needed. Absolutely. Uh, to date, youth have historically been mixed with the older adult homeless that are 20 to 60 years older than them, which is not only wrong, it's um, not safe. And the best practice research shows that this is true. In addition to youth just saying, I don't feel comfortable here. Uh, I don't feel safe. Well, let's hope some changes are in the process of being made as you expose some of these needs that need to be satisfied. We're working on it. I know you are, day and night. Day and night. <laughs> yes, day and night, 24-7. <laughs> and Kevin? It's a pleasure to have you with us, and I know that you serve a very strong purpose in AHO. 
you are the outreach youth advisor, you're on the board, and you also do a lot of other things. So tell us a little bit about you and how you found out about AHO and how long ago? Well, about three years ago, um, I was struggling in my own life uh, and I actually became friends with Jimmy Hayes at the time. He was the outreach youth advisor and uh, me and him became roommates and uh, through meeting AHO and their organization, I found a, a, a support group. Um, especially through a time where I didn't have a job and you know I couldn't pay rent. AHO was there to help me and support me. Um, and then through that um, course of actions, I found people that were like me that wanted to make their life better and they wanted to be independent. And uh, I found a support group in which I felt that I could succeed in life. And I know you said to me that if it weren't for AHO, your life could have gone in a very different direction. Oh, most definitely. I feel that, uh, you know, I was having a falling out with my parents and not having a support group, I felt like as if I was floundering and, you know, I didn't really know what would, what would happen, you know, at a time where I didn't have a job, I couldn't pay rent. Um, you know, I, you know, thought best situations maybe living with some friends, but the resources do run out sometimes. Um, and uh, yeah, especially the group that I was hanging out with, you know, involved with drugs and alcohol, you know, that was also affecting my life in a negative situation. So AHO definitely provided me with a, uh, a strong support group and a, um, yeah. How is AHO unique? Um, I think the simplest way to say it is that uh, it's a organization that's, you know, run by the youth that's there to support the youth. Um, you know, these are the next leaders of the world, you know, just needing a support group. And as we come together, we're able to, uh, you know, accomplish goals which, you know, really give us validation for what we do. Um, and a lot of studies have shown that the best way to help, help youth make changes in their own lives is by sharing with other youth, supporting other youth, and being supported back by other youth. Well, it's peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Even though AHO has, you know, adults that, uh, you know, mentor the youth as, you know, a father or mother would with their child, you know, it's also good to have friends because, you know, they say that your peers are your, your family, you know, and so with a strong family, you know, you're able to, uh, you know, accomplish more and you have more confidence and more drive in life. Um, and focus. I know focus is very important. Well, structure, you know, as the um, outreach youth mm -hmm. advisor, I help to form a task force, which we meet every week, and that's a form of structure. And, uh, you know, I, I believe AHO, you know, understands that uh, structure is also a very important factor in, in, a, in a healthy, you know, successful path in life. And you were able to move away from that old social group and, Most definitely. and make much better choices for yourself. Um, I know AHO also did something else for you personally that was so important and it gave you impetus at age 23 yes. to meet your birth mom and your blood siblings. Most definitely. With the support that I had with AHO, I felt like I could make a difference. And, you know, being a, adopted from birth, you know, I always wanted to know where I came from and who, you know, my, the, you know, the people that made me. And so, you know, uh, being discouraged and you know floundering not really knowing what was happening in my life you know I, I had no idea what to do but after working with AHO for about a year or so I thought it was important for me to uh, go through that learning process and that experience um, which has had a profound effect on me. And I'm sure on your birth mom and your siblings as well? Most definitely yeah they are extremely delighted and thrilled that I uh, you know um, connected with them and it, it it's a uh, it's very um, you know very special to have so many people that um, love and support you it's it is yes wonderful you also learned about yourself in other ways you learned that you had talent and that you have abilities and that you have a potential 
to become better and stronger. Um, tell us about that. Tell us about one of some of the things you learned about yourself through AHO. Maybe the empathy to, you know, put myself in other people's shoes and, uh, you know, maybe I might not have had as difficult as a life as some of the youth that I talk to and that we meet, um, but I'm able to at least, uh, you know, feel for them and, you know, feel for their passion, which, yeah, then, you know, I'm able to support them and know that if I had difficulties in what I did, I could share my experiences and, you know, hopefully offer my support. So you learned about your ability to empathize and to understand other people. Very important. I shouldn't use the word skill, but a very important thing to learn about yourself. Um, Kevin also has a very unique ability to be able to relate to people of all ages. Yes, and most definitely. And that's something you learned Oh, through your um, affiliation with AHO? Well, yeah, I mean, before AHO, I really, you know, uh, wasn't involved with talking to people like, uh, you know, Susan Adams' aide, which is, she's on the Board of Supervisors, and talking to her aide about AHO, um, you know, when, you know, the the task force put a youth connect where we put those, you know, all of those 32 um, community partners under uh, one roof for one day and any youth could come through the doors and, uh, you know, get those services rendered to them. And uh, at this spot, at this time, it was, you know, going to cost us some money. So we were looking for funds and, you know, being able to talk to, you know, the board of supervisors and stuff. I. I I didn't know that I had that ability and that confidence to be able to talk to somebody twice my age and, uh, you know, um, feeling like I had great success doing it too, so. I'm sure you were very well received. Tell us definitely a, was. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Tell us about that event. You explained it to me a few days ago and it sounds wonderful. So yeah. you had 32 service providers, dentists, doctors, therapists. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you can, under one roof. It's a lot to go over, but what happens is the task force that um, I developed with uh, another ambassador, which is uh, Daniela, and me and her uh, were meeting, and our two most important things we wanted to combat was social awareness, because so many people say, oh, we don't know what AHO is, our ambassadors are hoping opportunity is, and um, also, too, to help. Uh, raise funds for AHO because we are a grassroots, um, privately funded organization. It's, it's tough. And, you know, uh, we had car washes and we had uh, fundraisers. And after raising money for a little bit, we wanted to provide, you know, something special for these youths. And so we decided to try to put all of these services under one roof, which was at the Marin Youth Center. And any youth could come into the door um, and we paired them up with another peer. So for as many youths that came through the door, we had a youth that would be linked with them. Um, and at this point, we also filled surveys for data collection, you know, just because it's hard to figure out these numbers of how many people are at risk, how many people are homeless. And then once we get done with the survey, we were able to, you know, actually bring these people to these different services where we had like, a, it was like a job fair, you know, you had Safeway there and Whole Foods, we had PG&E, we had other businesses there, plus we had people that provide uh, resources like housing, we had lawyers, we had doctors for STD <laughs> testing, um, haircuts, oh clothing, boy. food, I know you had food, food, I mean, bicycles, bicycles, and we had, yeah, we had, uh, yeah, we gave bicycles away for transportation, um, and yeah, we, we did so much in, in one whole day, I, and it's, uh, you know, it's just, um, and that was just, just one accomplishment that we And had. that was all youth doing that. They spent a year working on yeah. creating this amazing event it's that had never happened anywhere before in the country.